Anything You Want by Derek Sivers. This summary is brought to you by Hook My Book. In this book, the author, Derek Sivers shares his personal philosophies and lessons learned from starting and growing a small business. He says that business is not about money, but about making dreams come true for others and for yourself. He emphasizes the importance of making a company, as it is a great way to improve the world and improve yourself. He also says that, although it is important to have a plan, it is more important to be true to yourself and do what makes you happy. He warns against chasing money and doing things just for the sake of doing them, and encourages aspiring entrepreneurs to be persistent in their pursuits and to always put their happiness first. If you want to be successful, you have to be persistent. If you keep trying to promote your projects even if they don't seem to be working, eventually you'll hit a point where people love your project so much that the doors to success open up for you. If you're not excited about an idea, it's best to say no. When you say no to most things, you leave room in your life to throw yourself completely into that rare thing that makes you say, hell yeah. For every event you get invited to, every request to start a new project, if you're not saying, hell yeah, about it, say no. Most people don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They imitate others, go with the flow, and follow paths without making their own. They spend decades in pursuit of something that someone convinced them they should want, without realizing that it won't make them happy. Don't be on your deathbed someday, having squandered your one chance at life, full of regret because you pursued little distractions instead of big dreams. You need to know your personal philosophy of what makes you happy and what's worth doing. Start now, no funding is needed. The advantage of not having any funding is that you can spend more time on your business and not have to worry about money. None of your customers will ask you to turn your attention to expanding. They want you to keep your attention focused on them. It's counterintuitive, but the way to grow your business is to focus entirely on your existing customers. Just thrill them, and they'll tell everyone. It is usually a bad idea to wait until you can raise money before you try to do something big. If you do this, you might be more in love with the idea of being big 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 than with actually doing something useful. Instead, you can start small and grow your idea into something big if you are actually useful. If you want to be useful, you can always start now, with only 1% of what you have in your grand vision. It'll be a humble prototype version of your grand vision, but you'll be in the game. You'll be ahead of the rest, because you actually started, while others are waiting for the finish line to magically appear at the starting line. Never forget that absolutely everything you do is for your customers. Make every decision, even decisions about whether to expand the business, raise money, or promote someone, according to what's best for your customers. If you're ever unsure what to prioritize, just ask your customers the open-ended question, how can I best help you now? Then focus on satisfying those requests. None of your customers will ask you to turn your attention to expanding. They want you to keep your attention focused on them. It's counterintuitive, but the way to grow your business is to focus entirely on your existing customers. Just thrill them, and they'll tell everyone. It's all about execution. An idea is only worth something if it is executed. If an idea is weak, it is worth one. If an idea is SOSO, it is worth five. If an idea is good, it is worth ten. If an idea is great, it is worth fifteen. If an idea does not have good or great execution, it is worth one dollar. If an idea has weak execution, it is worth one thousand dollars. If an idea has SOSO execution, it is worth ten thousand dollars. If an idea has good execution, it is worth one hundred thousand dollars. If an idea has great execution, it is worth $1 million. Patience is the key. People think a revolution needs to involve loud provocations, fists in the air, and bloodshed. But if you think true love looks like Romeo and Juliet, you'll overlook a great relationship that grows slowly. If you think your life's purpose needs to hit you like a lightning bolt, you'll overlook the little day-to-day -day things that fascinate you. If you think revolution needs to feel like war, 
you'll overlook the importance of simply serving people better. When you're onto something great, it won't feel like a revolution. It'll feel like an uncommon sense. The strength of many little customers. Many small entrepreneurs think that if they can just land a big client, they will be successful. However, this approach has many problems. First, you have to custom tailor your product to please a very few specific people, and those people might change their minds or leave the company. Second, if you do land the big client, that organization will practically own you. By trying so hard to please the big client, you will lose touch with what the rest of the world wants. Instead, imagine that you have designed your business to have no big clients, just lots of little clients. This way, you don't have to change what you do to please one client, you only need to please the majority, or yourself. If one client needs to leave, it's okay, you can sincerely wish him well. Don't try to please everyone. Most businesses try to please everyone, but this can backfire because it's hard to get people's attention when they're constantly being ignored. So, you need to be confident in who you are and what you stand for, and exclude people in order to get their attention. This will make them want to come to you instead of the other 99% of businesses. No advertising. Marketing is dead. In a perfect world, would your website be covered with advertising? When you've asked your customers what would improve your service, has anyone said, please fill your website with more advertising? Nope. So don't do it. You don't need a plan or a vision. Don't think you need a huge vision. Just stay focused on helping people today. Care about your customers more than about yourself. The author says that it is important to put the customers first and not worry about yourself. He also says that if the customers no longer need the company then it is okay to close it down. Act like you don't need the money. Banks love to lend money to those who don't need it. Record labels love to sign musicians who don't need their help. People fall in love with people who won't give them the time of day. It's a strange law of human behavior. It's pretty universal. If you set up your business like you don't need the money, people are happier to pay you. When someone's doing something for the money, people can sense it, like they sense a desperate lover. It's a turn-off. When someone's doing something for love, being generous instead of stingy, trusting instead of fearful, it triggers this law, we want to give to those who give. It's another Tao of business, set up your business like you don't need the money, and it'll likely come your way. Don't punish everyone for one person's mistake. A business owner has a policy where all orders are final and there are no refunds. If someone violates this policy, they will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. This policy is meant to discourage people from violating the policy, but it is important to remember that life will continue. A business owner should learn to shrug and resist the urge to punish everyone for one person's mistake. Little things make all the difference. Even if you want to be big someday, remember that you never need to act like a big boring company. If you find even the smallest way to make people smile, they'll remember you more for that smile than for all your other fancy business model stuff. Don't try to impress an invisible jury of MBA professors. It's okay to be casual. When you're thinking of how to make your business bigger, it's tempting to try to think all the big thoughts and come up with world-changing massive action plans. But please know that it's often the tiny details that really thrill people enough to make them tell all their friends about you. Prepare to double. When you make a business, you're making a little world where you control the laws. It doesn't matter how things are done everywhere else. In your little world, you can make it as it should be. Never be the typical tragic small business that gets frazzled and freaked out when business is doing well. It sends a repulsive, I can't handle this, message to everyone. Instead, if your internal processes are always designed to handle twice your existing load, it sends an attractive, come on in, we've got plenty of room, message. Delegate or die, the self-employment trap. A self-employed person is busy doing everything themselves because they are afraid to delegate, but eventually, they hit a breaking point and have to learn to delegate in order to keep their business running. 
There's a big difference between being self-employed and being a business owner. Being self-employed feels like freedom until you realize that if you take time off, your business crumbles. To be a true business owner, make it so that you could leave for a year, and when you came back, your business would be doing better than when you left. Everyone assumes that as the owner of the company, you'll be the traditional CEO, having high-powered lunches with other high-powered CEOs and doing all the big business deals. But what if you don't like doing that? What if what you love the most is the solitude of the craft? Or talking to customers? Never forget that you can make your role anything you want it to be. Anything you hate to do, someone else loves. So find that person and let her do it. Business is as creative as the fine arts. You can be as unconventional, unique, and quirky as you want. A business is a reflection of the creator. Some people want to be billionaires with thousands of employees. Some people want to work alone. Some want as much profit as possible. Some want as little profit as possible. Some want to be in Silicon Valley with Fortune 500 customers. Some want to be anonymous. No matter which goal you choose, there will be lots of people telling you you're wrong. Just pay close attention to what excites you and what drains you. Pay close attention to when you're being the real you and when you're trying to impress an invisible jury. Even if what you're doing is slowing the growth of your business, if it makes you happy, that's okay. It's your choice to remain small. End of the summary. Thanks for listening.